Welcome to Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Now, this is a game that uh, most of you probably are familiar with. Uh, at least those of you who have been gaming for a couple of years, since the Mass Effect games are uh, fairly um, legendary in themselves, I would say. I haven't played the game for many, many, many years, so I'm basically going to be going into this playing blind. Have a certain idea of what I want to do. But that's about it. So there will be uh, many uh, interesting moments. And also I haven't had a, a story based game on my channel for quite some time now. So I figured that let's try Mass Effect. But with one little contingency. Normally I don't care that all uh, care all that much about view counts and stuff like that. But if I see that the series uh, drops down to, to a view count that isn't really uh, anything to take note of, I'll probably discontinue the series because this is a... Let's just say a very long time commitment going into, especially if I'm going to move on to number two and number three after that. Uh, Andromeda, I touch regardless but that's a different story um so keep that in mind um but if i play the game i might as well record it but sometimes it's also nice to just play the game or play a game without recording two as a kind of a take the day off kind of game or uh, some moments where i don't have to talk while i <laughs> while i game um, before we jump into this, uh, let's have a look at the uh, options, because I know that that is relevant for many of you, so in case you are considering buying the game, uh, you might want to, uh, to see what you can do here. Graphics, you have the usual stuff that you can expect here. Uh, they do have a frame rate cap, which I think is disabled due to the V-Sync being enabled, but uh, since I have a G-Sync monitor, that's a true G-Sync monitor, not just a compatible one, uh, having VSync enabled is kind of a requirement to have uh, the uh, um, VSync function as it should. You have uh, you don't have much of an option in terms of uh, like setting the type of anti-aliasing and stuff like that. Uh, ooh, I want to turn that off. Motion blur is horrible for me. Uh, so this is what you have in uh, graphic options in calibration. Uh, I'm fairly amused by that. You have brightness, you have HDR. My monitor is not HDR compatible, so uh, I do not have those options and cannot demonstrate those. Sound, dialogue volume, sound effects volume, music volume. I did some tests and uh, 15, I hope that isn't too low in regards to the sound effects in general in the game because um, if I had it much higher than that, shooting was um, loud. I also might have to experiment a bit with these uh, as we progress. I am paying attention to the uh, sliders in OBS and uh, for now it seems to be fine. Controls, you can invert the Y axis. Um, you have a mouse sensitivity. You have the camera relative steering of the Mako, um, that is a vehicle we'll get eventually. Camera sensitivity, stick and shooting configuration, not sure what that is, no idea. Key bindings, you can rebind most things I believe. Uh, there is plenty of things here that you can rebind, so I think that uh, this should provide sufficient key bindings for most of you to be happy. Gameplay. Uh, we are going to use the new legendary mode level scaling. For those of you who are not familiar with this, um, this is one of the changes that they've added to the game. Uh, Mass Effect 1 was, uh, was based around uh, playing the game twice. You would play the game through and then you would also play a new game plus and that's how you reached the level 60. In this uh, new legendary mode version, they have uh, chunked it down so that it's 30 levels, uh, which I believe is in range with Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 3 as well. 
And you get more talent points per level, but you level up a little more uh, infrequently uh, as a result of that. But that that's fine. I'm keeping all of these as they are. Combat difficulty, you can choose from casual to insanity. I'll keep that on normal. Uh, auto level up is default set to squad only, I believe. I'm not keeping that on. I want to level up my characters myself. The squad power usage, you can set them uh, to how you want them to use their powers automatically. Um, defensive seems fine, might change it to all depending on what or, or how the game progresses. So that is the options that you have available to you. Uh, I did uh, test uh, just briefly, so uh, I have the resume here. Uh, normally when you start the game you'd only have a start new career available. And we are going to start a new career. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. And you can either pick John Shepard or Jane Shepard, which gives you a default character. Or you can make your own character and uh, build the character yourself, which is of course what we're going to do. And here you can do quick start with male or female, which jumps you into the game as a female soldier but, or a male soldier. But I am not going to play a soldier, so I will pick a custom male. I know many people would prefer to play female, but uh, I tend to prefer playing as male. Please log in to access your profile. Now you can, of course, change the uh, first name, and I guess I shall do that to Cal, so I'll be Cal Shepard. Note that you have Warning. to do this. Data corruption detected. Please reconstruct profile. Exactly. You have Confirm to do this. Confirm pre-service history. If you want to to modify uh, the class you're playing and the service history and stuff like that, um, we'll go with the spacer. Uh, both of your parents were in the Alliance military. Your childhood was spent on ships and stations as they transferred from posting to posting, never staying in one location for more than a few years. Following in your parents' footsteps, you enlisted at the age of 18. Note that each of these three options will give you some story-based differences in the game. So, Spacer is the one that I uh, think look the most interesting. Confirm psychological profile. Then you have the uh, psychological profile, you have the sole survivor, uh, which I believe these affect whether you're a paragon or renegade. So the sole survivor is the neutral one. I think it gives you a little bit of both paragon and renegade points. War hero will give you only paragon points and ruthless will give you only renegade points. Now, Paragon being the good guy, Renegade being the bad guy, probably uh, obvious from the description. I am, of course, going to play as a Paragon because I rather not like, I, I'm not that much of a fan of being a, a bad guy in, in role playing games. Uh, probably also in real life. Depends on who you ask, I suppose. Uh, so we'll go with the war hero here. Confirm military specialization. Okay, so this is the class selection where the soldier, the adept, and I believe this. Ah, okay, so it's the soldier, the adept, and the engineer. Yeah, these are the pure classes. You have three, like soldier, of course, being a weapon, weapon specialty. You don't have any. Um, "Quote unquote magic abilities. The engineer use tech abilities, and the adepts use biotic uh, abilities, which uh, is very much like the Force in in Star Wars, I suppose. And then you have the three um, the three classes that are kind of hybrids: infiltrators combine combat and tech, uh, sentinels combine biotic and tech." 
Um, this is not a good class for a new player to play because uh, you are then very reliant upon your team or squad being out front while you stay in the back, just so you're warned about that one. The vanguard uh, would be the uh, biotic warriors. Uh, many people like playing the vanguard. Um, I'm sure that those of you who regularly follow my channel already know what I'm going to pick. Oh, maybe not. You might be surprised. Many of you might probably think that I'm going to pick an adept. I'm not. I'm going to pick an infiltrator. Confirm facial identification. Now you can change the appearance of this guy, and I think I want to do that, but I'll pause the recording while I do that, because that's going to take a while, so I shall be right back when I have <laughs> made a face that I'm happy with. There we go. I think I'll go with this guy here. Uh, the code here, you can actually use that if you would like to copy for whatever reason. I don't understand why, but if you'd like to copy the... Uh, the settings now just as a showing off this kind of uh, thing here you don't some of these are sliders some of them are not as you can see yes it's a slider but it just pops between different uh, settings rather than rather than um, being actual sliders, whereas for instance the height sliders like these, those are sliders. Um, so there is some limitation to the uh, to the character creation, but of course that is not all that unexpected considering this game is originally from 2007. Profile so. reconstruction complete. And there we go. Identification confirmed. We'll leave this as I set it on earlier and go into the game. Well, what about Shepard? He's a spacer, lived aboard starships most of his life. Military service runs in the family. Both his parents were in the Navy. He proved himself during the Blitz. Held off enemy forces on the ground until reinforcements arrived. He's the only reason Elysium is still standing. We can't question his courage. Humanity needs a hero. And Shepard's the best we've got. I'll make the call. Arcturus Prime relays in range, initiating transmission sequence. Commander? We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. The relay is hot, acquiring approach vector. All stations secure for transit. Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal emission sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. I hate that guy. Nihilus gave you a compliment. So you hate him. 
You remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just jumped us halfway across the galaxy and hit a target the size of a pinhead. So that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. Call me paranoid. You're paranoid. The Council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. Game actually uh, respects the uh, audio volume sliders on the intro sections and the video sections. That is very good. Um, let's take your overreacting here. You always expect the worst. Well, bad feelings are an occupational hazard. But we don't go anywhere unless there's a good reason, so what are we doing here? Joker, status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the comm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? I'm on my way. <laughs> is it me or does the Captain always sound a little pissed off? Only when he's talking to you, Joker. So, for those of you who played the original, they have definitely improved the graphics on the game. Um, I, the first thing that I'm going to do, I think, is reduce the volume slider on dialogue a little bit. Let's try 67 and see if that's a bit better. Getting dragged right along with him. Relax, Presley. You're gonna give yourself an ulcer. Talk to this guy. Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? Well, sounds like you don't trust our Turian guest. Sorry, Commander. Just having a chat with Adams down at Engineering. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. But you have to admit, something's odd about this mission. The whole crew feels it. I'll look into it. I'll see if I can get some answers when I see him. Good luck, Commander. As a matter of fact, since all of the dialogue is voice voice over, uh, you guys will see what I pick down there anyway, so I'll not bother mentioning what I pick. The captain's in charge here. He wouldn't take orders from a Spectre. Not his choice, Doc. Spectres don't answer to anyone. They can do whatever they want. Kill anyone who gets in their way. Oh, you watch too many spy vids, Jenkins. Have one of those delightful British accent. Or what do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Only a fool goes looking for a fight, Corporal. Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. Just treat this like every other assignment you've had and everything will work out. Easy for you to say. You proved yourself in the Blitz. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. There's an example of uh, how the background uh, selections that I picked uh, affects what they will respond. You're young, Corporal. You have a long career ahead of you. Don't do something stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, sir. I'm not going to screw this up. And the investigate option is if we want to uh, deeper into the dialogue. Like, for instance, if we want to ask about, say, Nihilus. What can you tell me about Nihilus? Turians are generally well respected by the other species. Their fleet has more patrols protecting Citadel space than any other. They don't always get on well with us, though. Some people find them too rigid. Others still blame them for the first contact war. As for Nihilus, I haven't said more than two words to him. He usually only speaks to the captain. I hope we get a chance to see him in action. I heard Nihilus took down an entire enemy platoon all by himself. But I'm not going to bother with uh, the investigation stuff. Uh, at least not here. So uh, The captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, let's Commander. Get... Goodbye. Let's get back to the story progression here. Commander Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. What about? I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. 
They say it's a paradise. Yes, a paradise. Serene, tranquil, safe. Eden Prime has become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? This is a typical Paragon uh, renegade uh, thing. Not a threat, that would be renegade to ask. Let's ask him why he's asking. Do you know something? Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. This mission is far more than a simple shakedown run. I already figured that out. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. What's the payload, Captain? A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the Citadel, our ship drives. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is Big Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the Citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. Yeah, Captain somewhat reminds me of John Adama from uh, Battlestar Galactica. It never hurts to have a few extra hands on board. The beacon is not the only reason I'm here, Shepard. Nihilus wants to see you in action, Commander. He's here to evaluate you. What's going on, Captain? The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. You held off an enemy assault during the Blitz single-handed. You showed not only courage, but also incredible skill. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy, and to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. Kind of amusing to me uh, how some role-playing games just thrust you into the story without explaining anything to you. Now, this was the first time I was playing the game, I would be wondering what the heck is a spectre and what's that got to do with, with the, the story and so forth. Just tell me what I have to do. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. Although, if I were using the investigate options a little bit more, then I would get more information and background on things. Um, I suppose I... Depending on who of you are watching, like, I know some people will be watching this and won't be playing the game themselves and might be interested in the uh, in the storyline behind it, so... What do you know about the Protheans? Just what they taught us in school. They were a technologically advanced species that ruled the galaxy 50,000 years ago. Then they vanished. Nobody really knows how or why, though I've heard plenty of theories. But everyone agrees, galactic civilization wouldn't exist without them. Their citadel is the very heart of galactic society. And without their mass relays, interstellar travel would be impossible. We all owe the Protheans a great debt. I'd like to know more about Eden Prime before we touch down. It's a peaceful farming world, but it represents something much bigger. Eden Prime is one of our oldest and most successful colonies. It proved we were ready to face the challenges of settling new worlds, to forge a place for humanity beyond Earth. It symbolizes humanity's growth and evolution as a spacefaring species, and after this, it will be known as the world where humans made a discovery of galactic importance. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology, even yours. 
If we hadn't discovered those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on Earth. That was just a small data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Like who? The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliant ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. The Attican Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low key. So that is, of course, how I would have gotten some information about the Spectres if I had talked to the Doctor and so forth. Um, so yeah, maybe I should do the investigation things for the sake of the uh, series. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden. Captain, we got a problem. Of What's course. wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Get down! We are under attack, taking heavy casualties! I repeat, heavy casualties! We can't... Get evac! They came out of nowhere! We need... That looks friendly. Everything cuts out after that. No comm traffic at all. Just goes dead. There's nothing. Reverse and hold of 38.5. Status report. 17 minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more complicated. Really? A small strike team can move quickly, without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. Tell Alenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. Engaging stealth systems. This doesn't really look like a paradise to me, but... Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. Your team's the muscle in this operation, Commander. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you're coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. Ready and able, sir. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! We are approaching drop point two. And here we are in the actual Ship game. Now you can hold down uh, this place got hit hard, Commander. shift to uh, pick between the uh, various uh, weapons that you have. I'm going to use the sniper rifle. Now the sniper rifle, or rather the infiltrator, infiltrator class, wasn't that enjoyable to play in Mass Effect 1 because this has been massively improved. This is actually reliable now. Whereas in the original, it was not that reliable. Let's see if the sound settings work. Yeah, that works wonderfully. If you look at uh, the weapon down in the left corner, you'll notice some yellow stuff popping up. Damn. And that is the weapon overheat. Uh, if it overheats, there will be a cooldown before you can uh, shoot with that weapon again. And you can, of course, quickly change weapons with the uh, uh, mouse wheel. It quickly, of course, being relative. 
I really like how they've added uh, reflections into the water and stuff like that. Now, things like this usually means that there's something hidden. And indeed there was. For the most part, I find it easier to just do it like this. Um, I also think that we might be able to level up already. Yeah, we have three points. Now, the ones that are greyed out, as you can see, it says required. Pistols, five points to open this. Fitness, tactical armor, requires six points. Damping, electronics, requires four points. And first aid, requires decryption, seven points. There will be more talents than this uh, later on, but I will uh, not uh, bother with that. Let's take off the helmet. Put a point in pistols, one point in charm, and I think... Infiltration. Infiltrator, yes. Uh, then we have Kaiden. He's a sentinel. Um, let's give him barrier. And... First aid? And then Richard, give him Assault Rifles and Soldier, and quick save. Oh god, what happened here? You can also switch the, uh, the weapons for your squad, so... He's using the assault rifle, he's using the pistol. I can change these. Uh, they've also changed uh, the ability for certain classes that in the original either couldn't use the weapons entirely or they had massive penalties to it. That's no longer the case. You can use all kinds of weapons on all the classes, but you don't get the, um, the uh, skill trees for them. Well, there is the bonus talent thing, but that comes much later. But you actually have to aim. Uh, and especially with a sniper rifle, that is very important because... Uh, Otherwise, it overheats and you don't get that much uh, out of your high damage capacity. Ripped right through his shields. They're out of chance. We'll see that he receives a proper service once the mission is complete. But I need you to stay focused. Aye, aye, sir. Paragon plus two. Another benefit of playing as the Infiltrator is that you can quickly and easily convert uh, loot that you don't need into Omnigel. Here, a lot of bodies. I'm going to check it out. I'll I don't... Try to catch up with you at the dig site. I don't think we've leveled up again, have we? No. Secured. Should be more of them, I think. Now, your squad mates will automatically attack and do things, uh, but you can also control them, uh, as the game mentioned there. See if there's any chests or anything around here to loot. Um, down there, there is. Most of this will just be uh, basic stuff, anyways. But medical stuff is always nice. What happened to this guy?
headshotting is very definitely a thing. So if you can headshot, you want to do that. Or at least try it. Nothing there. Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams of the 212. You the one in charge here, sir? Are you wounded, Williams? A few scrapes and burns. Nothing serious. The others weren't so lucky. Oh, man. We were patrolling the perimeter when the attack hit. We tried to get off a distress call, but they cut off our communications. I've been fighting for my life ever since. Where's the rest of your squad? We tried to double back to the beacon, but we walked into an ambush. I don't think any of the others... I think I'm the only one left. This isn't your fault, Williams. You couldn't have done anything to save them. Yes, sir. We held our position as long as we could, until the Geth overwhelmed us. The Geth haven't been seen outside the Vale in nearly 200 years. Why are they here now? They must have come for the beacon. The dig site is close, just over that rise. It might still be there. We could use your help, Williams. Aye, aye, sir. It's time for payback. What is this Geth? What else do you know about the Geth? Just what I remember from history class back in school. They're synthetics, non-organic life forms with limited AI programming, created by the Quarians a few centuries ago. They were supposed to be a source of cheap labor, but ended up turning on the Quarians and drove them into exile. Well, after that, they just kind of disappeared behind the Perseus Veil. Nobody's really heard much from them since. Tell me everything you know about the Beacon. They were doing some digging out here to extend the monorail and expand the colony. A few weeks ago, they unearthed some Prothean ruins and the Beacon. Suddenly, every scientific expert in the colony was interested. That's when they brought us in to secure the site. I don't know much about the Beacon itself, but I heard one of the researchers say this could be the biggest scientific discovery of the century. What happened to the researchers at the dig site? I don't know. They set up camp near the Beacon. The 232 was with them. Maybe their unit fared better than mine. Describe what happened leading up to the attack. We were sent out a couple of nights ago from the main colony to secure the area. Seemed like a routine patrol until the Geth hit us. We never knew they were coming. Have you seen a Turian Spectre around here? There aren't any Turians on Eden Prime. None that I've ever met. Not sure I'd be able to tell if one was a Spectre anyway. If you saw this guy, you'd know. Carries enough firepower to wipe out a whole platoon. Luckily, he's on our side. Sorry. Like I said, no Turians. Move out. Okay. Well... I guess I can uh, add some uh, talent points for her as well. Ashley Williams. Helmet on. She's very obviously a soldier. Uh, we'll give her a point in pistols and a point... No, not in pistols. We'll give her a point in assault rifles. The next there increases damage by 5% and accuracy by 10. Now I think we want to stay on these for now. Make sure that she's using the correct weapon. Yep. Good. The beacon's at the far end of this trench. These things are rather gruesome. Can we get some cover tutorial? We uh, get some crouching tutorial. Should be another one in there. Probably even a third one since she's shooting at something. One seems a bit more uh, difficult to uh, get around to, so let's just equip the pistol. Oh. I 
And you also have the overheat on that weapon, of course. Home Level up. Clear. Let's uh, do that quickly. Uh, squad. So now we get six points, which is a lot more than I would be getting if I weren't uh, playing uh, the legendary uh, edition version. Let's get another point in charm. Uh, and now we also want to get uh, points in pistol. Get that one up. Uh, Tactical armor is nice, but we also want to take decryption. I don't know how far up we need to take that. I'll take one more point in infiltrator. And I forgot the other two. Kaiden, uh, you can get one more point in f or two more points in first aid. These are abilities that you uh, unlock that uh, are quite nice, actually. Give you... One point in each of these, I think. Ashley can take two points in assault rifles, one point in combat armor, and I also think one point in soldier. This thing is the dig site. This is the dig site. The beacon mm -hmm. was right here. It must have been moved. By who? Our side or the Geth? Hard to say. Maybe we'll know more after we check out the research camp. You think anyone got out of here alive? If they were lucky. Maybe hiding up in the camp. It's just on the top of this ridge, up the ramps. Change of plans, Shepard. There's a small spaceport up ahead. I want to check it out. I'll wait for you there. Here are things that we can loot that I can reduce to Omnigel, and I'll just do that because I don't need any of these. And take that one. Most of these items are very low level. Uh, there's an assault rifle. It's a Banshee. It's not as good as the one they currently have. Um, let's convert it into a gel. We can do it from the inventory as well. And you can run by holding down spacebar. I want to change to the sniper rifle, please. Looks like they hit the camp hard. It's a good place for an ambush. Keep your guard up. Oh god, they're still alive! What did the Geth do to them? Eat them cybernetic. Yeah, getting headshots is rather important. You want to damage them without overheating. Huh. Source to the weapon. Some locked objects require decryption or electronics to access. If any squad member has the required talent, you will be able to unlock the object using the decryption or electronics interface or by spending Omnigel. This is just a basic uh, description of how in manual override. So we want to get into the center of this thing without hitting any of the uh, squares, which isn't that hard on this one. Humans, thank the Maker. Hurry, close the door before they come back. Don't worry, we'll protect you. Thank you, I think we'll be okay now. It looks like everyone's gone. You're Dr. Warren, the one in charge of the excavation. Do you know what happened to the beacon? It was moved to the spaceport this morning. Manuel and I stayed behind to help pack up the camp. When the attack came, the Marines held them off long enough for us to hide. They gave their lives to save us. 
No one is saved. The age of humanity is ended. Soon, only ruin and corpses will remain. He doesn't seem like the most stable guy. What else can you tell me about the attack? It all happened so fast. One second we were gathering up our equipment, the next we were hiding in the shed while the Geth swarmed over the camp. Agents of the Destroyers, bringers of darkness, heralds of our extinction. We could hear the battle outside, gunfire, screams. I thought it would never end. Then everything went quiet. We just sat there, too afraid to move, until you came along. Did you notice a Turian in the area? I saw him, the Prophet, leader of the enemy. He was here, before the attack. Mm. That's impossible. Nihilus was with us in the Normandy before the attack. He couldn't have been here. I I'm sorry, Manuel's still a bit unsettled. We haven't seen your Turian. We've been hiding in here since the attack. Can you tell me anything about the beacon? It's some type of data module from a galaxy-wide communications network. Remarkably well preserved. It could be the greatest scientific discovery of our lifetime. Miraculous new technologies, groundbreaking medical advances. Who knows what secrets are locked inside? We have unearthed the heart of evil. Awakened the beast. Unleashed the darkness. Manuel, please. This isn't the time. This guy needs some medication, I think. What's wrong with your assistant? Manuel has a brilliant mind, but he's always been a bit unstable. Mm -hmm. Genius and madness are two sides of the same coin. Is it madness to see the future? To see the destruction rushing towards us? To understand there is no escape? No hope? No. I am not mad. I'm the only sane one left. Yes. I gave him an extra dose of his meds after the attack. It's good at least. Williams, take us to the spaceport. You can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. Night is falling. The darkness of eternity. Hush, Manuel. Go lie down. You'll feel better once the medication kicks in. Plus two paragon points. Nice. Anything we can loot in here? No. There should be something in here, though. Actually, two. Let's take all of them and have a look at them in our equipment. Banshee 2. Now this one has higher damage per second, but a lower heat sink capacity and lower accuracy as well. Let's give her that one. So got a shotgun. Uh, let's Omni Gel that one. And that one. That's about it. Now, I think I'll save here and uh, we'll continue down that path in the uh, next episode because uh, we're reaching the uh, point of 50 minutes very soon. So I don't want the episode to be too long, even though it is episode one. So, but don't expect the episodes in this series to be uh, like 30, 35 minutes. Uh, it'll probably be between 40 and 50 minutes in general. Anyhow, I hope that you enjoyed uh, this episode uh, and uh, I hope that you'll uh, let me know whether you are interested in uh, this being an actual long play series on the uh, channel. If you have any questions and or comments, as per usual, do please feel free to leave those in the comment section and uh, I will see you all in the next episode. Thank you so much for being here with me.